Hello again and welcome to the ICAL soil biology course. In today's lesson, we'll be covering nematodes. As we start, let's look and see where nematodes fit in the soil food web. We can see that they fit across three trophic levels, the second, third and even fourth trophic level. That's the decomposing mutualists, shredders, predators and grazers, and even higher level predators. This just goes to show how critical they are in the ongoings in our soils. We can see that they're listed as root feeders, fungal and bacterial feeders, and also as predators. How special is that? Before we go into nematodes in detail, let's think about what we know about nematodes as farmers and how we came to believe this about them. Most of us have been told that nematodes are bad guys. We've been told they need to be removed from the soil and we've been advised on using various pesticides to deal with them. We're told they destroy crops and tubers and some of them do, but they don't do it to spite us. They do it because it's their food source. They don't know we didn't plant our crops for them Frankly, I'm sure they don't really care. So when we have nematodes eating our crops, it's generally because we've attracted the specific variety of nematode into our fields due to our actions. Yep, you may be sitting back on your chair with your arms folded now, asking yourself, how could this be? But it's easy to understand. Think back the last few lessons. What are we learning? Ultimately, the problems we have with our soils are self-designed and self-imposed. We know that a stable soil food web is a balanced food web resulting in healthy crops. We also know that our actions of tilling and use of synthetic in inputs disrupts this stability. So from now on, let's all understand that infestations and damage by nematodes or in fact aphids and other crop pests are of our own making. And we now know how to change this simply by building a stable food web, a stable soil food web, one which we can now see must include nematodes. So what are nematodes? Nematodes used to be called roundworms. Um, soil nematodes are not the same type of roundworms that infect people. They have unsegmented bodies, and most are so tiny that they can only be seen through a microscope. They're 5 to 100 microns thick and 0 0.1 to 2.5 millimetres long. What role do soil nematodes play in the soil? Well, nematodes help distribute bacteria and fungi through the soil and along the roots by carrying live and dormant microbes on their surfaces and in their digestive systems. In the soil, they make nutrients available to plants, they help build soil structure, they stimulate prey groups, and they also inhibit root feeding nematodes. You may be wondering how they do this. Well, there are many types of soil nematodes, and to understand them, when we see them under the microscope, we separate them into their function groups based on their mouth parts and their digestive system characteristics. There are bacterial feeders, fungal feeders, omnivores, predatory nematodes, root feeders. Obviously, to feed on such diversity, nematodes must have especially designed mouth parts. And it's here that we find the clues that help us identify them precisely. Bacterial feeders gobble up soil solution that contains bacteria. Fungal feeders have a really cool weapon-like spear in biology, it's called a stylet, which they use to puncture the fungal hyphae before pulling the yummy food in the fungal hyphae into their mouths. Predatory nematodes eat other nematodes and they seem to prefer eating their root feeding cousins. They have what looks like a tooth in their mouth. Different ones have different teeth looking things and they grab the nematodes that they're going to feed on and pull them in using that tooth and then suck out the suck the insides of the nematode that they're predating on and gobble them up. 
Root feeding nematodes also have a special weapon. Um, it's designed to puncture roots, and as root cells are much thicker and harder to get through than fungal hyphae, the root feeding nematode spear is assisted with an organ that looks like two little knobs. It uses this system to spring load its spear before releasing it with force into the plant roots through the plant cell root cell walls. Root feeders can be catastrophic if their density is high, but they're not of big, of big significance in balanced soils as the predatory nematodes with their teeth will keep these numbers down. And finally, we have omnivore nematodes, which are the generalists, as they feed on many different soil organisms. Nematodes are sensitive to disturbances such as tillage, soil pollutants, and excessive inputs of nitrogen fertilizer. So who eats nematodes? Nematodes are eaten by micro and macro arthropods and predatory nematodes and soil in insects with chewing mouth parts. There are also some fungi that trap, trap nematodes. They form loops when they grow and if a nematode goes through the loop, they instantly swell up sucking in water and it traps the nematode. The fungal hyphae then grows into the nematode feeding off its nutrients as body fluids which are full of bacteria and all the things the nematode's eaten. Um, and they go along doing their fungal business producing spores as they grow and the poop loop continues. Remember this? Living plants breaking down into de dead organic matter which is broken down by uh, bacteria and um, Fungi, um, the microsoil predators, then the protozoa, the amoeba, the flagellates, the ciliates, then break this down depending on the aerobic or anaerobic condition of the, 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 the substrate. Um, and then the nematodes of the arthropods and the mites then predate on those and then again poop. And in the process, their poop goes back into the system. Most nematodes reproduce through production of eggs that are released in the soil, though some species hatch the egg in the female's body. Most species have female and males, but some are hermaphrodites, which means they're capable of self-fertilization. Baby nematodes, like most little insecty-like creatures, go through a few growth stages before they become mature adults. Bacterial feeding nematodes mature very rapidly in two to eight weeks, whilst predatory and fungal feeders mature later and can live for many years. So where do beneficial nematodes prefer to live? Beneficial nematodes require aerobic conditions. If the oxygen levels drop below six parts per million gram, they die. However, their eggs will survive. Nematodes don't produce spores or cysts. If conditions become unfavorable, unlike fungi and protozoa, they die, spilling their nutrient-rich bodies back into the soil, back into the circle of life. Although endoparasitic nematodes, those that move into the root systems, they can sometimes protect themselves from outside disturbances. What are mineralization and immobilization? So here we come back to a slide that we've been seeing many times just to remind us of the nutrient cycling that is happening through these microbes, soil microbes. Soil nutrients generally occur in two forms, inorganic compounds dissolved in water or attached to minerals, and organic compounds, part of li living organisms, and dead organic matter. Bacteria, fungi, nematodes, protozoa and arthropods are always transforming nutrients between these two forms. When they consume the inorganic compounds to construct cells, enzymes and other organic compounds needed to grow, they're said to be immobilizing the nutrients. When organisms, organisms excrete inorganic waste compounds, they're said to be mineralizing nutrients. So you see how absolutely critical they are in keeping the nutrient cycling happening that our plants so desperately depend on. Based on what we know, let's try to imagine a world without nematodes. None of the micro or macro arthropods would survive. Would our soils be left in early successive stage, only able to sustain weeds? 
would our soils collapse? Let's have a look at the data from farmers across Kenya and see if we can see the links between declining yields and production systems. We asked farmers, have you noticed declining crop yields in your soils over the years? Almost 88% out of a subset of 960 farmers said yes. We asked, do you know what's ca causing your declining crop yields? And 66% said no. Some farmers, though, said they did. did. We asked what kind of fertilisers we, we used. Almost all were using synthetic fertilisers or combinations with uncomposted manure. And finally, we asked, do you plough or dig up your land before planting? A staggering 90% said yes, they ploughed their fields. Now let's think about the connections here. Farmers don't enjoy or plan on wasting time. Farm activities are expected to result in tangible outputs. Higher yields, more income. Why is it that with all the ploughing, digging and adding synthetic inputs, we're still resulting in reduced yields? With your knowledge from lesson one to six, you've learned about bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and now nematodes. You've learned about the vital soil food web and how our actions can build this or disrupt it. And you can see on your farms what happens now under the soil and the connections to what we do above the soil. Now let's have a look at some nematodes.